Okay. That's before and that's after it's all cleaned up. Looks much better. Okay. So I just finished cleaning the heads up and I just used a little uh, I guess just a little wire brush very fine uh, to clean them up I didn't want something too coarse um, worked out really well this here brush it's just a nylon brush I got at uh, Canadian Tire I think I paid 18 or 19 bucks for it and uh, it's a it's like a nylon brush and I just put it on the end of the DeWalt impact there and just went over the top of the the engine surface with that didn't push too hard um, but it did a really nice job of cleaning up the top of the engine um, it might have been a little too hard for the aluminum heads so I didn't use it on the aluminum heads I used that like it was just a little wire brush but very fine wire brush on the end of the drill um, this was a little bit more coarse uh, this brush here but it did a really good job on the top of the engine uh, I'm not sure I'd use it on the aluminum heads but just want to stress that um, but just cleaning these up here right now and it made really quick work of cleaning off the top of the engine but I also like to stress that I am not a mechanic um, I'm not a mechanic I I just uh, bought this old truck I like playing around with trucks and engines and doing engine swaps and stuff so but by all means I'm not a mechanic so anything you see me doing on here do at your own risk um, I will answer questions as best I can if you have any but uh, but yeah I'm not a mechanic but anyway I've uh, got the top of the engine all cleaned up and then I'm going to use a scuff pad I bought this fairly large it just I call it a scuff pad um, and a little bit of uh, brake cleaner that's the pad there I just go over the top of the engine just to kind of scuff it up and you can see there it looks pretty good and now I'm going to take some brake clean and a cloth and the brake cleaner is just to get rid of any oil or grease that's left behind there but just making sure that everything is cleaned up really well because if you've got oil or grease between your gaskets they're not going to seal very well and you'll have leaks and problems down the road so I'm just wiping both sides down really good and that's just cheap brake cleaner I got at Canadian Tire so I think it was like around five dollars a can maybe maybe less than that it wasn't much anyway So I just uh, noticed another spot on the other side there so I just took the drill and the brush and just giving it a quick clean in there. No big deal. Anyway, this is where I messed up. Um, when I put this engine together, I didn't realize that those gaskets have to go on a certain way. I looked on the gaskets to see if there was a front or a back or any markings on the gaskets and there was none. It did not say front, it did not say back, nothing like that. So I thought they can go on either way. It didn't matter. Anyway, after I started watching my videos, um, I noticed those two holes way at the back there by the back cylinder. And those two holes right there that are at the back by that back cylinder, I had them up at the front. And they're not supposed to go up at the front. They have to go at the back because that brings coolant up through the head. 
and I did not know that. So I had to pull this engine, or tear this engine, all down again. And this is me flipping the gaskets over now, the right way. Uh, yeah, I don't like doing things twice, but I messed up. I knew I had to fix it, so I fixed it. Not a big deal. Uh, didn't take as long the second time to tear it down and put it back together. So, anyway, head gaskets are installed properly now. And uh, I can continue on with putting everything back together. But yeah, it was a... I wasn't very happy. I was like, oh man, I gotta pull this engine apart again. Anyway, it wasn't that bad. It took... Uh, I think the second time it took me like I started at nine o'clock in the morning around there and I was done at like four in the afternoon and I had that truck all back together uh, by four o'clock so so yeah didn't didn't take near as long the, the second time so so now all I'm doing here is getting the heads ready to pop them back on everything was already clean so there was no real issues there as far as cleaning stuff up again it was just a matter of wiping everything down um, making sure there was no oil or anything like that on the surfaces and just put everything back together but yeah live and learn I guess eh? that's that's what I did here <laughs> head gaskets gotta go on a certain way guys <laughs> those two little holes gotta go at the back of the engine remember that So here I am just getting the heads put on. Um, I'm just putting a bolt up there on the top just to hold it in place just in case it falls off. It shouldn't but just securing it with a bolt. And now I'm dropping the, these are the 15 mil head bolts. There's five that go inside underneath the valve spring assembly and there's five that go along the bottom underneath the manifold, exhaust manifold. So, and then there's also five 10 mil bolts that go right along the top edge there um, in underneath the intake manifold. And those ones are just 10 mil. I tightened the the 15 mil bolts. Uh, I tightened them down to 20. I think I went 25 foot pounds. Then I went 50 foot pounds. And then I went 75 foot pounds on all the 15 mil bolts. Uh, the, the 10 mil bolts, the ones that go in underneath the intake, um, manifold, those just, I just tightened them down to 25 and left them, um. So, what I did guys, <laughs> I put the jack under there and lifted the exhaust up just to show you. So it makes it a lot easier to hook up. As you can see now the exhaust is up pretty well in line where it has to be. 
on both sides. Might have to go up a little bit more on that side, but it's pretty well where it's got to be. And that'll make it a lot easier to put the gaskets on there and put the bolts in. I hope. We're going to give it a try. Okay guys, I got the manifolds are all on. Bolt it in. Next thing I got to do is put spark plugs in and then I would say the intake. And one thing you can't forget to do I almost did was this wire. This is the ground wire. That's got to go on the back of the head back there with this bolt. So let's do that. So here I'm just starting to put the spark plugs in. Um, and I don't know what happened, but I lost some footage here of spark plug installation and intake manifold installation because obviously it's in now. Um, not sure what happened to my camera. This is a new camera. I'm still getting used to it. Um, but I am trying. And hopefully, over time, I'll get better. That's just the wire there that goes up to the alternator. I'm just rooting that around underneath the throttle body. It's got to connect up to the alternator there. And that's all I'm doing now. I'm just going through and plugging in any plugs that need to be plugged in and rooting wires where they got to go. Um, plugging in the coil packs. Things like that. Just buttoning everything up nice. And here I'm just uh, installing the alternator power steering pump bracket. Um, it's a pretty easy installation. There's three 15 mil bolts at the top right in underneath the alternator. There's one at the very bottom. Uh, I believe it's to the left of the power steering pump at the bottom. Um, and there's one 15 mil bolt that goes in on the side, uh, just down by the water pump filler neck. There's a, in behind there, there's a, a 15 mil bolt. Takes a little bit of doing and wrestling, but you can get it.
So now I'm just hooking up the plugins to the alternator and there's that one wire that goes on a lug on the back of the alternator um, that runs right over to the battery. So I'm just hooking that up now. And there's a little plug that goes in the top of the alternator too. And now I'm just installing the fan belt. So I'm just trying to figure out which way it goes on here. It takes a little bit of doing, but. And there's the belt installed. And I believe I have to still put it on the tensioner. I think I get a wrench here and I put the tensioner. Yeah, there I got a wrench and I'm just going to push the tensioner towards the alternator there and then slide the belt over top of the pulley. And that's really it. That easy to put the belt on. Belt's on. I'm just checking to make sure the belt's on nice and straight. It's not falling off anywhere. I just used a hammer there just to tap the edge of the belt in a little bit. It's a little bit crooked. But other than that, it looked good. Oh, the truck's running. Oh, I guess they better. Yeah. It's running really good, actually. I don't see any leaks underneath, nothing. There's a little bit of water here. This would be from the exhaust. I would imagine there was a lot of water in the exhaust. It's still dripping there, condensation. But the exhaust is cleared right up, as you can see. There's almost no smoke there now. Or no steam, I should say. There was a lot of steam there when I first started it. But I think we got it. And we'll check the temperatures. I gotta go to the dump. Boxes. Garbage. Temperature is at 100 degrees, just a little under 100 degrees Celsius, and it hasn't gone past that yet, so I don't think it's overheating or anything, which is good. It's idling perfectly, all kinds of heat coming out of the vents. I think we're good.